So this month we're going to be having a look at the reduction of copper oxide. This is a practical that a lot of students will maybe do with carbon. Uh, one of the problems with that, of course, is that you've got all of this black carbon powder that's making it difficult for them to see the product. And if you do it with hydrogen instead, you also have the advantage of being able to see the oxidation product, the water. The problem with doing the classic old school version of the copper oxide reduction is that it tends to be fairly dangerous. You've got a reasonably large volume of hydrogen and oxygen that potentially could combine and produce a hazardous explosion. And there have been accidents in the past. So what we're going to be having a look at is a slightly microscale version of this. And a lot of teachers immediately switch off when they hear the words microscale because they think it involves sort of getting lots of specialist equipment, uh, but everything that I'm actually going to be using here is just easily found uh, lying around in the school. And I'm going to start off with some copper oxide. It's quite good at absorbing moisture from the atmosphere, so I'm going to dry this off in a Bunsen flame before I get started. Now we only need a very small amount of the copper oxide for this experiment to work. About a micro spatula load, about 0.1 grams. So, I'm just drying it off a little bit. And this stuff is fairly dry already. It's quite nice. So I'll let that cool down. And I'm going to turn off the Bunsen because I don't need that anymore. Whilst that's cooling, uh, I'm going to need to go and collect myself some hydrogen. So I've got a hydrogen cylinder over by the side. And on the end of my apparatus here, I've got a plastic syringe. I've got a 20 milliliter one. Ideal would probably be more like about 50, but 20 is what we had lying around, so I'm going to go with this. It does work with this amount. And that's sort of fitted to some silicon tubing, which is more resistant to higher temperatures than rubber tubing, and then a, the end of a glass pasta pipette. So traditionally, um, you might sort of suggest that in order for you to be able to do this, you'd need something like a, a special lock towards the ends of the syringe. And those are really handy, but again, there's no need to specially go out and get one of these. A small piece of modeling clay or blue tack will do the job just as well, um, especially if you're going to be collecting the hydrogen almost immediately before you do the demonstration. So I'm gonna go and collect that hydrogen now. So I've now loaded my syringe with some hydrogen and I've also placed my copper oxide, about a micro spatula load, inside the pipette. That's really important that you load the hydrogen before you light any ignition sources, so that's why I've gone away and done that. And to get this up to temperature we're going to use an ethanol spirit burner, because it burns a little bit cooler than a micro Bunsen and runs at slightly lower risk of actually melting the pasta pipette itself. So if you leave that underneath the copper oxide for about two minutes, then that will get up to temperature and you'll be able to pass the hydrogen over the top of the copper oxide. So what I'll do is actually bring the camera in a little bit closer so that we can see the reaction in more detail. So about two minutes have passed now, so I'm going to just gently pass the hydrogen over the top of the copper oxide and you should be able to see the glow of the exothermic reaction and also some water condensing in the end of the tube. Once you've allowed the tube to cool, you can quite easily remove the copper and show that it will conduct an electric current.